Hello you all, I am Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And in this video, which was highly requested, we are going to talk about a popular topic when it comes to the spiritual world, soul ties. Now I know a lot of you guys say, oh I watch you with my daughter or my son or my niece. This may not be the kid friendly video just because we're going to talk about SEX just a little bit. So you may want to skip out on this video, but I'll be back on Sunday with the new one, okay? The crystal and symbol of the day is the Ankh and Clear Quartz. The Ankh has come to symbolize life and immortality, the universe, power, and life-giving air and water. Its key-like shape has also encouraged the belief it could unlock the gates of death. Combined with the Clear Quartz, the meaning and energy obtained by the Ankh is amplified and open to whatever intention it is charged with by the individual it is called to. And you can get your onk and clear quartz at blackwitchyaya.com. Automatically, when you think of the term soul ties, you think intercourse. Be careful who you have sex with because you never know. Their energy may tie into yours and make your life crazy. But there's honestly many forms of soul ties that I want to dive just a little bit into. Just because we may be a part of some that we don't even know. So first, let's start off with the definition of soul ties. Soul tie can be defined as spiritual connections between two people. Most people say soul ties are formed due to the physical relationship between people, but even emotional, social, and spiritual relationships result in developing soul ties between people. So as you guys can see from the definition, we are a part of soul ties between our parents, between our sisters, between our brothers, between our best friend. And the main reason why soul ties exist because we aren't meant to live in isolation. We're meant to have bonds with people, to make connections, to grow with each other and from the experiences that we learn from other people. So not all soul ties are bad, but the most ones that get pushed to the forefront are the ones that can be a little bit detrimental. But before we go into those, let's talk about the good soul ties. So let's talk about soul ties that forms right in front of us, but we may not identify it as an actual soul tie. So have you ever seen that couple that hangs around so much they start to look and sound alike? Or you may have a best friend and people mistake you guys for sisters just because you laugh the same, you make the same jokes, you have all these insiders, you were about to call her and she was about to call you, y'all text each other at the same time, or you can kind of feel when that person is sick or ill or something's wrong. This could go for your best friends, actual sisters, actual brothers, especially twins. You kind of get that feeling like, let me call Chelsea because I feel like something's going on with her or something just tells you to call or reach out to certain people, that's a soul tie because without even thinking about it, your energy is connected. So once one person energy shifts, you feel a shift in your energy as well. Actually, we are born with automatic soul ties to our parents just because we are a part of them. We come from two souls to create one. So automatically we have a tie to them as well, no matter the actual physical connection or the relationship that we may have in the physical world on a spiritual aspect, we are tied to them in somehow, some way. That's why people who may not have a good relationship with their parents, throughout life you find yourself unteaching yourself certain things, trying to heal from different traumas to break that soul tie that we were born with just because you couldn't help it as you were younger because we were so dependent on them, our parent figures, that when you get older you're like, this triggers me, maybe it's because of this, or my mom was like this when she was younger and I'm noticing that I'm doing the same thing those are all different elements of a soul tie so when we get older even if we have the best connection with our parents they are the best parents in the world it's certain things we're like okay I need to break this because this is a little I don't want this a part of my life so let me break this tie depending on our relationship with our cousins our aunties our uncles we have soul ties to them as well. Some people may have a stronger soul tie to their grandparents than the actual parents or aunt and uncle. So there are all different types of ties going on in the family just due to birth. Hence why the term, oh, we broke ties with that side of the family, just because there's an automatic tie when you are born with the people in your close proximity, which is more than likely your family. So when you break ties with them, you're breaking that physical and soul tie as well. So that's the nice and beautiful and healthy side of a soul tie when we hang around people we don't mind vibrating like people who lift our mood people who just bring us overall joy we don't mind tying up and soul tying with them it doesn't have to be an actual intimate relationship it could be a platonic relationship you and your cousins can be best friends just all around good people that we don't mind being around and forming a connection with 
that's the good side now when we surround ourselves with people who may not have the same vibration that we have or what we want this is where not so good soul ties are formed so you know those type of people that you could just be in their presence and then your mood shrinks you could be vibrating so high having the best day but when you're around them you just get in a bad mood and they necessarily do not even have to be complaining just being in their presence is very somber it's just oh it just throws off your whole energy frequency those are the type of people that we want to avoid making soul ties with but when that happens these are the type of soul ties that can be created now taking the turn over to relationships let's just say you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you're in a relationship with them as your relationship grows stronger you are forming a stronger and stronger soul tie now whether that's good or bad just depends on the individuals at hand but let's talk about the bad side of a soul tie so when it comes to intercourse and soul ties i'm not going to dive too deep into it just because from listening to people i know it could be a little triggering and sensitive to some people so just giving an overall general synopsis when you're having intercourse with someone it's more than liquids being exchanged it's the energy what makes them happy what makes them sad their trauma being mixed with yours as well and sometimes one can outweigh one with how bad it is so you may find yourself anytime you have intercourse with that person your day goes bad something bad happens you leave their house you get a flat tire your mood changes you're sad for no reason and you don't know why and there's also an example as well and i won't go to too much detail because this is a real story we all know with intercourse with sex they describe it as a spell it's magical that's why they use those terms to describe how good it feels so when you're having sex you're in a way casting a spell as well just because of strong energy exchanges that are taking place so there was an example of a young woman and a man who were having consistent intercourse and each time they did the gentleman was casting spells on the young lady without her knowing this is why she couldn't figure out why she couldn't leave him why when she felt that he was cheating she could never catch him in the act or for some reason she just always believed what he said even if others around her were like girl hello he's lying to you like he's lying with the truth right behind his back and so she couldn't catch on to it just because the spells he were casting during sex of course during the process she didn't know because he was saying it in his head he had stuff laid underneath the bed so you really want to be careful with who you have intercourse with this is why i don't want to get too deep into it because i know we all exercise our intercourseness as we want to so i'm not going to demonize anybody but just you know try to be careful as much as possible and at least know what the person is up to because i would hate for you guys to be in that situation where you're being hypnotized during sex and you can't figure out why you're losing control of your life so that's just an extreme example of how a soul tie can be forced formed and shaped by someone who does not have good intentions for you but let's get into some signs of a bad soul tie so here are five signs that you are in a toxic soul tie number one you can't leave the relationship anytime you try anytime you pack your bags and you get ready to go it's something that physically stops you or emotionally stops you where you just all of a sudden change your mind or he apologizes the right way she apologizes the right way anytime you try to leave to free yourself it's like the cages come back to trap you back in beyond your control and this is not just a simple oh i don't want to leave because i'm gonna miss her this is just it feels like someone's literally holding you back from freeing yourself beyond the oh i don't want to leave because i'm going to miss them i don't want to leave because what am i going to do without them just the simple woes that we go through during a breakup this feels like someone is literally anytime you pack your bag someone's slinging them back in the room like girl get your behind back there the next sign that you are in a toxic soul tie is that you can't stop thinking about the person now remember this is the toxic side of a soul tie i feel like that word is overused but the toxic side of a soul tie where anytime you try to do better for yourself gain your momentum back pick up from where you left off that person always comes to your mind and you feel the urge to call them to go see them to stop by their job to do like a nice gesture just to get trapped back into that soul tie because once a soul tie is so toxic and so tight it feels that it's a part of your life so when you try to break away from it you automatically feel like you're missing something even though you know what you were a part of was bad for you you just feel like it's a necessary evil to continue with your life 
The third sign of a toxic soul tie is that you feel that you can't make a decision without consulting with that person, almost in the line with control, like, oh, I can't do that unless I ask them first. And I can't do this if unless I ask them. I wonder how they're going to feel about it. And again, this is beyond the simple good side where it's like that gentleman is like, okay, let me go ask my wife real quick. Not on that genuine normal level, but this is to the point where you feel like you're going to get in trouble if you don't consult that person or you simply can't think for yourself. You have to consult with them, have that confirmation from them before you make a move because you don't trust yourself because that knot in that tie is so tight to the point where you're dependent on them to dictate every move in your life. The fourth sign is when they get sick, you get sick. When they have a bad day, you have a bad day. When they're feeling uneasy, you're feeling uneasy. And you don't necessarily have to be in the same proximity. Just in general, when they catch a cold, you at work sniffling and coughing too. It's just so much to the point where your energies are so aligned. You almost become the same person because your souls are knotted so they're lined up. The fifth sign is that you no longer have control over your life. You can't think of yourself as an individual. When you think of you, you think of your whole entire personality traits, what you like, what you do. It always involves that other person because you can't think of yourself as an independent. Like, oh, what do you like to do? Hang out with my boyfriend. So what do you do in your free time? Hang out with my girlfriend. What do you like? I mean, it's whatever my girl down for. Like you think, everything you think of involves that other person instead of like, what do you like to do? I like to read. What do you like to do? I like to hang out with him. It's almost like you always have to be a part of him and have to be next to him and your thinking lines up with that other person's thinking to the point where it's one brain. Now these examples I gave you can go for good or bad soul ties just because it's easily to be involved in both or one or the other. So for example, the first example I gave you of not being able to leave the relationship, if you're in a happy and healthy relationship, you may have moments like, wow, what would I do without you? What would life be if I would have never met you? That's different. The second one, you can't stop thinking about the person. You're so in love with them and you have so much fun with them. They run through your mind all day. How does that thing go? Like, hey girl, you must be tired because you've been running through my mind all day. When you're a part of a healthy relationship, your husband may get sick and you may get sick too because the thought of them being sick makes you sick because you love them oh so much. So all of these examples can be an example of a healthy soul tie. You really have to go based on how you feel and how you naturally know how that person is. So those are examples of good and bad soul ties that we may be a part of in life. We may know it, we may not know it, but stay tuned for my next video where we talk about how to break soul ties. So if you feel that any of these examples apply to you that you may be in a bad soul tie, I wanna give you guys some examples on how you can break it, how you can make the first move to getting your life back. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Like I always say, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. Until next time, you guys, I say.